She's a double certified doctor helping to empower women around their body and fertility. From her practice to her podcast, Dr Natalie Crawford is breaking down stigmas surrounding pregnancy and healthy conception. Yeah, but please say that she joins us live from Austin, Texas to separate fact from fiction. Great to have your company this morning. Now, we know women are waiting longer to start a family in this day and age, but at what age should they be thinking about their fertility? That's a great question because we see that people are waiting longer to get pregnant. And most people don't know that if you want to have two children and have the lowest chance of needing fertility treatment intervention, you need to start trying to have your kids around age 27 or 28. And that's just for two kids. So if you wanted three or four, it needs to be at an even earlier age. We recommend overall, if you're getting to this age and you're not ready to start a family, this is the ideal time to get a fertility evaluation and consider options like egg freezing if having kids is a lifelong goal. Interesting. Okay, so the research tells us that the rates of infertility are increasing. What are the main factors behind that? There's a few different reasons. Honestly, what we see is that, as we said, people are waiting longer to get pregnant. That's definitely one of them. But we also see an increase in environmental toxins. We've seen that associated with a decrease in both egg and sperm quality. And also people are overall less healthy. We see a lot more autoimmune disease, inflammatory disorder, obesity, and all of these things negatively contribute to your ability to get pregnant. So there are many myths when it comes to increasing your chances of falling pregnant. Can you debunk some of these for us? Because I think people really hold on to them. Oh, for sure. One that I hear all the time is that people are saving up their sperm or having less intercourse because they're trying to hit the perfect day. But the studies show us that more intercourse is better. If you are a couple who frequently is having intercourse daily or every other day or a few times a week, by no means have less. In the same breath, you don't have to wait to go to the bathroom afterwards. You don't have to lie and put your feet in the air. Mm. Sperm can swim through the fallopian tubes in seconds. So the sperm are going to get where they need to go very quickly and no behavior that you're going to do after the fact is going to make a difference. Okay, what, what about the idea that it is generally always because of the woman infertility and not necessarily the man. What is the truth behind that? Yeah, we know that that's not the truth at all. That in fact, a third of all cases are due to solely male factor and then another third are due to a combined male and female factor. Another myth that I hear all the time is that there's no reason to worry about your fertility because there's nothing that you can do. And we know that there are things you can do within your lifestyle that can improve your fertility. So everything that could decrease inflammation in your body. So getting good sleep at night, eating a diet high in fruits and vegetables, decreasing your exposures to toxins, such as smoking cigarettes, marijuana, alcohol, and making sure that you're reducing stress where you can, exercise and moving your body is always really good. So I think it's important to control the factors that you can, because you can't control your increasing age and you can't always control everything else in the world around you, but you can control the things that you put inside your body. Natalie, before you go, can we ask you what you've learned about the contraceptive pill and its link to fertility? Oh, that's one of the biggest myths that I see online is there's so much negative attention when it comes to the birth control pill. The birth control pill does not cause infertility. That has been very well studied and I think it's important to say that. What we know is that the birth control pill simply prevents you from ovulating. All women still lose eggs every single month, regardless of if you're on any type of contraception, if you're pregnant, if you're breastfeeding, if you're having your period. The pill does not impact that at all. I will say that part of the reason it's gotten such a negative reputation is the fact that people were put on the pill at a really young age because something was wrong with their body. Maybe they had irregular cycles or they had a lot of pain and nobody got to the bottom of what the problem was. Mm. And now women are getting off the pill and they're ready to start their family. And it's really frustrating that suddenly now their periods have the same problems they had before. They're irregular or painful. And now we're trying to get to that diagnosis at a later time. So. I always recommend somebody stops the birth control pill about three to six months before they're really ready to get pregnant 
so that we can watch and see what their cycle does. Because the cycle you might have on the pill is an artificially induced one based on the pill's hormones. Wow, great to get the facts mm. on the matter. Natalie, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. And you can stream Natalie's podcast as a woman on iTunes or Spotify. Hey there, Today fans, Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?